Hello, this is Blue Star, Defender of Equestria, and this is my afterthoughts review of To Wear It Back Again. Oh man, this episode was just so cool. It was kind of surprising and in some ways kind of disturbing because all the princesses in the main six and just about every pony have been captured. But it just had such a beautiful happy ending. <laughs> and I'm just so proud of you, Thorax and Starlight Glimmer. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> Oh dear, I must admit I've been kind of hesitant to uh, do this afterthought review because I think at first this episode actually kind of disturbed me a little bit. Yeah, for starters, we're yeah, seeing all the beloved heroes and heroines captured. Oh dear, oh dear. And I must admit because of uh, the scene with Princess Luna being like dragged away, it's like, what? Even Princess Luna says in this episode that the dream world is her domain. So wait a minute, how are the chainsaws able to pull her out of it? No, Luna, no, I shall save you. <laughs> Parts of me should really go back and watch my reaction a little bit more. But yes, I was very enthusiastic because I do have to say this and hope we get this out of the way. But it's like, this would be like the perfect episode for Blue Star to be in if he was an actual character. And let's just say, I think I might be having some fun with this episode in the future. Oh, I think I will say this one line that I think I will just stop with this because yeah, it's like, there's no way that you're leaving me here. Not with the princesses, the main six, and all of the Equestria in danger. There is no way that I am staying here. All of the characters that would normally go and, you know, save us all have all been captured. We're all doomed, I tell you. Yeah, not just the princesses, but the main six, Spike, Shining Armor, and even the baby were captured by the Changelings. It's like, how could this possibly be any worse? I'm sure they could find a way, but no. <laughs> But yeah, getting past all that, that's obviously not really bad at all. But yeah, at first I think it just caught me off guard. Because yeah, like, this is like, how could this be any worse? It's like, we're all doomed. And especially later on when we learned that, oh, no magic. Arr! It's like, I do have to add one last thing about Blue Star. And Darn, I spent all this time developing this magic weapon. But now, my weapon does not function here. Arr! <sighs> Maybe I need to develop a whole new kind of weapon. Maybe one that propels projectiles down a metal tube using gases from an expanding chemical reaction. Eh, that's a terrible idea. Who would think of such a thing? Because that would never work. <laughs> But at the same time, you know what? That actually does kind of apply, because that's exactly how all the other characters feel. It's like, especially Star like Glimmer. It's like, she's trained and, you know, studied magic. She's very, very good at it. It doesn't help her. It's like, there's no magic here. And I think this is actually a pretty good thing for the show to do, because it is a pretty big criticism of the show, is that, yeah, sometimes things are too easy. Just pull out the elements of harmony, blast the bad guys, and everything's good. And, you know what, I still like the elements of harmony and how they operate and what they do, because the long story short here is that the elements of harmony, yes, sort of operate as a weapon that you could just put on and use to just blast the bad guys. But honestly, for the most part, they also don't operate like that. In order to get the elements of harmony and be able to use them, they have to overcome some sort of emotional problem or friendship problem. And that's when they can defeat the uh, bad guys in a cool emotional power moment. Roar! But it still is a pretty big criticism that, yeah, it's like sometimes that feels too easy. And that's why I think this was exactly the way they should have done this episode. And also that Starlight Glimmer was the perfect character to basically reform the Changelings. Because not only is she very smart and analytical and cunning, kind of the way that Chrysalis is, but she's also led the same way that Chrysalis leads, by brutal intimidation with basically an iron hoof. So it's like, so yeah, when Chrysalis says, you know nothing of the Changeling ways or how to lead the Changelings, it's like, actually she does. All those things help genuinely convince the Changelings, well, you know what, maybe she's right. Maybe there is a better way. Maybe we don't have to feed by forcibly taking love. Maybe we can share it. It's like, your hunger will never be satisfied. How would you like to never be hungry again? Oh, well, that would be kind of nice, you know? It's like, <laughs> I just had a thought, and I'm sure some of the changings are thinking, you know, I never really liked Christmas anyway. She's mean. 
<laughs> so I think that that was actually a pretty good match. And I, overall, I like this episode. There were some moments where it was kind of disturbing. Just a little bit. And like with Discord, again, feels the same way I think as all the other characters do. It's like, man, I don't have any magic. Ah, oh, this bites. And it honestly was another little disturbing moment where it's like he realizes that all these Fluttershies around him are not only they none of these the real Fluttershy, uh, but he also realizes that these are all changelings. And <laughs> he almost has a, oh my gosh, I am going to die <laughs> moment where it's like, uh oh, <laughs> which in a lot of ways makes sense for him because he's been this all powerful being that only the elements of harmony were able to defeat. And now he's just a guy with no magic at all where, yeah, a group of changers could go and capture him and ooh. Yeah, all these characters were pretty much taken out of their element and forced to basically quote unquote play by the, in a way the real world rules where, you know, we actually have to, you know, convince these people to actually change their ways and we can't just, you know, blast them with magic and stuff. And I think this episode was also fairly intelligent and smart and the way that it was portrayed and everything. And I think it was pretty good. And But yeah, so overall, I really did like this episode. All the characters were kind of portrayed very well and almost in a way were the perfect characters to pick here. And I think in a way, the biggest thing is that, yeah, the changelings were actually allowed to operate the way the changelings should operate. And Chrysalis was allowed to be the evil super villain genius that I think she was always meant to be, but in a way never really had the opportunity to. Because the long story short, the Changelings and Chrysalis were effectively forced into Canterlot Wedding. Hasbro basically went to DHX and said, Oh, we want to do a story about a wedding. Probably to tie into the British royal wedding that was going on at the time. Uh, but then DHX said, Uh, no, we don't really want to do that. <laughs> And they basically created this alternate story that had a wedding in it, but really wasn't about a wedding. Instead, it had the changelings and this big foreign invasion, and it was exciting, and it was cool, but this really isn't the way the changelings operate. As I said in the Chrysalis Analysis video, where it's like, they definitely operate in stealth and cunning and stuff. They wouldn't do something as stupid and blunt as knock down the front door and basically invade. You know, that was such an unchanging thing to do, but here they were allowed to operate as changings. They went and they basically replaced all the important figures in uh, Equestria, and basically none of the other ponies even know that this has happened. Except for Starlight Glimmer. They did in a way make one dumb mistake, but at the same time it actually works at the same time, is that they didn't replace Starlight Glimmer. She lives with these ponies, surely she's gonna notice that there's something wrong. If she doesn't notice it at first, she's gonna notice it eventually. But the reason why they don't replace her is because she's not actually in Ponyville. So I guess they decided it's like, ugh, yeah, we don't know where Starlight Glimmer is or when she's coming back. Ugh, let's not worry about her, it's not worth tracking her down and replacing her, ugh. <laughs> Maybe they're thinking it's like, by the time she comes back, it'll be too late. <laughs> and once again, Chris was is very arrogant during this episode, but in some ways, again, she has every reason to be. From her perspective, it's game over. She's already captured all the powerful ponies. The only two ponies that are left really are no threat to her. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be afraid of these two ponies who don't have magic when they're in my castle surrounded by my own uh, private army. Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> I don't like that. Even she said that. It's like, oh, how will I possibly prevent this brave rescue? Oh no! But still, it's like the ultimate resolution. Of this episode was pretty awesome. It was pretty cool. It's like, uh, I didn't realize that was Thorax when it's like talking to her, and it's like, oh, poor guy. And it's like, oh no, I couldn't help but think he is going to die. <laughs> and probably what would have happened? Cause oh dear, I don't think she's the kind that's gonna forgive treachery. <laughs> oh dear. I kind of like how all the characters are definitely obviously apprehensive and kind of scared about it. There's even one moment where uh, Thorax is hyperventilating, and of course, why shouldn't he be? And he's in the middle of this big hive surrounded by their arch enemies who are about to basically go and capture them. I would definitely be a little worried and anxious about it too, you know? 
especially knowing that the what's probably going to happen to them if they capture him. So again, it made sense for all the characters to be anxious and apprehensive. They've been taken out of their element where it's like the normal way of them dealing with the situation have all been taken away and they have to figure out a whole new way. But at the same time, they did it by playing to each of their strengths. And I think that was great. You know, it's like, even though each of them basically had to not quite make the ultimate sacrifice, but certainly make a pretty big sacrifice by basically getting themselves captured for the good of the team. Oh, your sacrifices will be remembered. But that was so cool, it really was. They each found a way to contribute, even if it was just, you know, stand in front of the changelings and allow yourself to be captured, unfortunately. Oh dear, oh dear. So anyway, so yeah, definitely the resolution of this episode was pretty awesome, and I like that. It's like, <laughs> I still remember myself thinking, so wait a minute, if Forex is over there, that means that, oh, Starlike Liver is right over there! <laughs> <laughs> that was great! You know, it's like, I like it. This episode was very intelligent. But it still was a relatively child-friendly thing, and it was still pretty cool. And I definitely think they did uh, that very well. It wasn't too much, and they didn't treat the audience like they're morons, like they don't understand. But they did uh, everything that they needed to do, and it was pretty good. Yo! And it's definitely so touching to see the changelings turn from the dark side and turn to the good side, and most of all, of their own free will. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> In some ways, I kind of feel bad for Chrysalis. She's just lost her entire army. Oh no. I did like the way that they made it look like, oh, Chrysalis might turn to the good side. But then it was like, no. I will have my revenge. <laughs> Oh no. In some ways, I was kind of concerned how she kind of flipped over the back of the cliff, because usually when people jump backwards over a cliff, it's usually to kill themselves. But then again, I've remembered that, yeah, she does actually have the ability to fly, so. <laughs> so, oh, Chris has had to run off all by herself somewhere, and, oh. But it is going to be interesting to see what they decide to do with Chrysalis in the future. Because, yeah, it's like, once again, it's like Chrysalis is too good of a villain to simply fling over the horizon or just simply fly away and to never be seen from again. It's like, oh no, Chrysalis is definitely going to be coming back at some point. Whether it's going to be next season, whether it's going to be two or three seasons from now, I definitely guarantee that Chrysalis will be back. But the question is, is what she's going to do when she does come back is going to be interesting because part of her thing has always been that she's had this giant changeling army and now that that doesn't appear to be true anymore, it'd mm, be interesting to see what would Chrysalis be able to do on her own. But anyway, I guess that's almost in a way of a topic for another video, I guess. But overall, it's like this was definitely a very good episode. It was definitely a good thing for them to have a change of pace. It's sort of a big and a small episode at the same time. I mean, the stakes are pretty high. It's like, you know, literally, once again, the fate of Equestria is hanging in the balance. But not only that, the fate of basically all of the primary characters that we really love and care for, their fate is basically up to star like Glimmer. And they're basically not involved in the story at all, which was a huge difference. It's like the main six were effectively not in this episode. I mean, they were in the episode at the beginning and the end, but effectively they had no role here. So, whoa, it's like a revolution in itself. But it was a good change of pace for them to basically not have a big, huge, quote unquote, magic heavy battle at the end and all that stuff. And this was almost Starlike Liber, quote unquote, talking the Chainswings to death. <laughs> But no, talking them into reforming and changing again of their own free will, which is definitely, yo-ho, that's awesome. And I think one last thing is like, it does kind of remind me of a line from the uh, episode of Star Wars Rebels, where like the long story short is one of the characters has to go into basically a cave or whatever full of monsters, but beforehand another character takes his lightsaber and another character asks, why take his weapon? And then he replies, he has to learn how to solve problems without it. And I think that's sort of what MOP had to do here. They had to learn how to solve these kind of problems without magic. Or perhaps demonstrate that they can. And certainly was the lesson for Starlight Glimmer. She has to learn to basically go outside her comfort zone and learn how to solve problems in different ways and in a way more genuinely connect with these ponies and the changelings. Because I guess in the long story short is that she's been using her magic to hide from these friendships and these problems and all these things. And now that that's been taken away, now she's finally been forced to learn how to deal with them the right way. But okay, so I think I'm rambling on and, uh, and in some ways this might be a good thing in some ways because it shows that there's a lot going on in this episode. There's a lot to think about and there was a lot in it that it wasn't just simply 
pull out the elements of harmony and blast the bad guys, which honestly, it sort of happens in the show, but honestly doesn't really happen that exact way. Again, it's like something else has to happen first. But again, it was definitely good for them to do an episode like this in this way to show that Memo P is not just about magical lasers and things. It is about genuinely solving problems and characters growing and evolving and overcoming their past and the problems and hopefully growing into a brighter and better place. So, yeah, ho! And once again, the magic of friendship prevails. Yay! There is hope for us yet, I tell you. So it's yet another glorious end to a yet another fantastic season of My Little Pony. Yo! Once again, thank you to DHX for working so hard on the show. Yo! So that is the end of my afterthought review of To Wear and Back Again. So, until next time, this is Blue Star. Stay strong and pony on. Blue Star out.